Math 31, let's try solving three-part inequalities. So I'm going to do examples four and five at the same time because they're written on this half of the, the packet. Okay, so when you have an, a three-part inequality, it, it literally means now you've got a left, a middle, and a right part. So you can see in all, in both of examples four and five, right? Left part, middle part, right part. Left part, middle part, right part. I'm going to do example four. It's the easier version, okay, because the variable is just in the middle. You can see this is a little bit more complicated because I have variables in all three of the parts. So when you're working with a three-part inequality, same rules apply, all right? If I wanted to solve for x, I need to add eight, and you would typically add eight to both sides, but now you have three sides, so I'm going to add eight to all three parts of that inequality. That's going to simplify. I'm going to get a 9 here. I'm going to get less than or equal to 6x because the 8s are going to cancel. And then 4 plus 8 is 12. Okay, great. Then all I need to do to isolate x is to divide by 6. So we'll divide not just left and right by 6, but now we're doing left, middle, and right by 6. Now 9 6 is the fraction 3 halves. 6x over 6 is x, and 12 over 6 is 2. All right, there's my inequality. Just for practice, let's write this up on the number line. If I was gonna write this up on the number line, I don't actually need to make my number line super long this time, which is great. So we would go from negative three, or not negative three halves, excuse me, positive three halves. All right, and then over here, I'm at positive two and I want to shade everything in between that. That would be my x-axis. And when I think about how I want to write that up in an interval, when I want to go low to high, I know I'm going to go 3 halves comma 2. Now, because this is a closed dot, I will use a closed bracket. Closed dot, closed bracket. So there is my answer, and it's in interval notation. Okay, so when you have three parts to your inequality, you solve it the same way. Whatever you do to one part of, in your, in, of your inequality, make sure you do to all three parts. Okay, so for this one, let's take a look at what we want to do here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract 4 from all three parts. Because really, I want to isolate my variable in the middle here. So let's subtract 4, subtract 4 subtract four. Let's see what we're working with. All right, so I'm gonna have three y minus four here is less than negative five y is less than or, not less than or equal to, excuse me, less than one plus three y. Okay, so when I look at that, I'd like to be able to divide by negative five, but that's, that's not good enough just yet because I still have these y's over here. But I notice that this is a three y and this is a three y. So I could knock these out, like if this was just an equal sign, I would knock them out. And it's, but it's not just an equal sign. So if I want to get rid of these three y's, if I want them to cancel, I'm going to subtract three y from all parts. And let's see what we're getting now. So three y minus three y, those are going to cancel. Now I have a negative four here. All right, negative five y minus three y is negative eight y. And then this just becomes one. And that's a lot better for me to be working with because now I've got my, my variable term in the middle and it's all by itself, it's isolated. So now I'm gonna divide by negative eight. And let's see what we get. Now, I hope some of your spidey senses are going off. You're like, okay, I'm dividing by a negative number. I've got an inequality. I've got to change the direction of the inequality. So we'll put one half here. Oops, I, I just made my own mistake. I've got to change the direction of the inequality to a greater than. I'm going to put a y here, and I'm going to put a greater than negative 1 eighth. Okay? Now, this is a little funky to look at because typically we have our lower numbers on the left side of our inequality. And negative 1 eighth is a smaller number than positive 1 half. So what I want to do is move the negative one-eighth to this side of the inequality, the positive one-half to that side of the inequality, and I'll keep y where it is. Now, when I change where these numbers are based, I'm going to change the direction of the inequality. So now we're looking at y is trapped between 
negative one eighth and positive one half. And you can go make the number line if you want, but eventually you wanna to get to the point where you're, you're thinking, you know, I can just write this in interval notation. So my answer is gonna be my low of negative one eighth, my high of positive one half, and because each of these have strictly less than symbols, I'm just gonna put the parentheses there. I don't want to include them in my answer. All right, so that's us taking a look at linear inequalities. We're now gonna look at absolute value inequalities. So I will catch you in a few. Thanks guys, bye.